That's drunk. Let's keep going with more Super Scope games, this time with Yoshi's Safari, and this game is right up there with Battle Clash and Metal Combat Falcon's Revenge as the best stuff the Super Scope has to offer. Uh, not that that means a whole lot, but still, Yoshi's Safari has quite a bit going for it. I mean, for one thing, this is a first-person Mario game where you play as Mario equipped with a Super Scope who rides on Yoshi all across the Jewelry Kingdom, which has been commandeered by Bowser and all the Koopa Kids. So yeah, while this may not be the Mushroom Kingdom, it's still pretty cool to be able to play a Mario game this way. I should mention, however, that the Super Scope is the only way to play this one. No controller or mouse functionality here unless you play in two-player mode, which I'll get to in a bit. You get three lives to get through 12 total levels. The first seven, you can choose whichever order you'd like to complete them before unlocking the next four, and then finally unlocking the final boss fight, which is of course Bowser. The game plays just about as you'd expect, you just fire at anything that pops up onto the screen while you're automatically propelled down each path. There's a couple extra things here, first is that you can jump by pressing the cursor button underneath the front sight on the Super Scope. The game throws some timed jumps in your way, just for the sake of some variety I guess. You also collect coins, with the magic number being 60 to get an extra life. There's also items you can collect, some you can use during the level, while some you can only use during a boss fight. The level items include the mushroom and and Fire Flower, only in Yoshi's Safari they help you recover your life, which you can see up top, or increase the length of your power gauge, which you can see underneath the life meter. So you can't just fire away non-stop, you can run out of power as dictated by that meter, at which point you'll be helpless. And Goombas and Koopas come at you pretty dang quickly, so you really do have to be cognizant of the power meter. There's also items that you can only use during boss fights, like Nuts, which reduce your damage by one half, and a Clock, which gives you an extra minute of time. Now, the action here gives me a couple different impressions. One is that I really dig how the game utilizes the entire screen. It seems like with a lot of light gun games, I usually have to concentrate on just the middle or just a certain section or whatever. But Yoshi Safari has enemies popping up even at the very edges, so that's pretty cool. But on the other hand, the enemies in this game get real repetitive real quickly. The first level sets the tone. Hope you like seeing lots of flying Goombas and stuff, cause that's all you're gonna see throughout the first few levels. The game does get off to kind of a slow start. Thankfully, Yoshi's Safari gives you plenty of incentive to keep going through this one, and that's because of the great looking boss fights. There is some really impressive pixel art here, both from the bosses and from Yoshi itself, like where he gets hit by this hammer brother. He looks back at you like, ah, what the hell you doing? You gotta shoot that stuff, man. You also fight all the Koopa Kids, which usually have two forms. Some have their own mechs, like Iggy and Ludwig, while others have a setting that reflects their stage in Super Mario World, like Wendy Koopa popping out of pipes, tossing bombs at you while a flying anvil shoots horseshoes at you? What? This fight in particular is tricky because not only do you have to dodge bombs and horseshoes, but the only way to do damage to Wendy is to shoot the anvil when it's flying above her. It's kinda neat and it requires a bit of patience. Again, the good qualities in this game are met with equally annoying flaws. For instance, Yoshi's Safari is a great case of a game that just gets better the further you progress, and it's really cool to see what kind of form each boss will take, or who you'll run into next, and the Bowser fight at the end, in particular, really looks great. I really dig how this game looks overall. The problem, however, is getting to that point, because this game can drag and drag. A full playthrough of this one can last easily over an hour, and in my opinion, that's way too long for a light gun game with such limited enemies and repetitive gameplay. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the two-player mode. Player 1 uses the Super Scope and the other controls Yoshi with the controller, giving him a bit more functionality like having him duck or slow down so you can shoot more bad guys. Heck, even if you're playing by yourself, you can try and control Yoshi in two-player mode with your feet if you're feeling up to the challenge. Hey, maybe that's just me, but it's still an option for you. But yeah, Yoshi's Safari is pretty dang good, it's absolutely worth getting if you own a Super Scope. Yeah, it's repetitive, but the way the Mario universe is depicted here is really cool. Plus, you get to see Mario walking around, toting a big plastic bazooka, I mean, you gotta love that. I just wish the levels had a little more enemy variety, but still, this one's right up there with Battle Clash and Metal Combat as must-haves if you own a Super Scope. Alright, I wanna thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.